physics as a discipline has a number of problems associated with it. Well, me as a chemist, it's kind of interesting that assembly theory, and I'm really, you know, I want to maintain some some credibility in the physicist size, but I have to push them because they physics is a really good discipline. It's it's reduced the number. Physics is about reducing the belief system, but they're down to some things in their belief system, yeah. which is kind of really makes me kind of grumpy. Number one is requiring order at the beginning universe magically. We don't need that. The second is the second law. Well, we don't actually need that. <laughs> and I, <laughs> this is blasphemous. I, well, in a minute, I'll, I'll recover my career in a second. Mm -hmm. Although I think the good, the only good thing about being the Regis chair means I think there has to be an act of parliament to fire me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you, so, can always, uh, you can always go to Lee's Twitter and protest. <laughs> and I think the third thing is that, so we've got, you know, we've got the, um, the order at the beginning. Yeah. Um, second law. Yeah, the second law and the fact that causation is emergent, right? And that time is emergent. Well, John Carroll just turned off this program. <laughs> I think he believes that it's emergent. So, so causation is not emergent. Uh, That's clearly incorrect. Hmm. Because we wouldn't exist otherwise. So, time, so physicists have kind of got confused about time. Time is a real thing. Well, I mean, so look, I'm very happy with the current description of the universe as physics give me because I can do a lot of stuff, right? I can go to the moon with Newtonian physics, I think, and I can understand um, the, the orbit of Mercury with relativity. And so, we, and I can build transistors with quantum mechanics, right? And I can do all this stuff. Yeah. So I'm not saying the physics is wrong. I'm just saying, if we say that time is fundamental, i.e., time is non-negotiable, there's a global clock. I don't need a. I don't need to require that there's order been magically made in the past, because that asymmetry is built into the way the universe is. So if time is fundamental, I mean, you you've been referring to as kind of an interesting formulation of that is memory. So uh, time time is hard to like put a finger on like what what the hell are we talking about? Well, it's just a direction, but memory is a construction, especially when you have like think about these local pockets of complexity, these um, non-zero assembly index entities that's being constructed, and they remember. Never forget molecules. <laughs> but remember, the thing is, I invented assembly theory. Um, I'll tell you, I invented it. When I was a kid, I mean, I, the thing is, I, I keep making fun of myself from a research group. I've only ever had one idea. I keep exploring that idea yeah. over the 40 years or so since I had that idea. I used to Well, go, aren't you the idea that the universe had? So it's very kind of hierarchical. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, that's, very, oh, that's very poetic. Yeah. Um, so I think I came up with assembly theory with the following idea. When I was a kid, I was obsessed about survival kits. What is the minimum stuff I would need to basically replicate my reality. And I love computers and I love technology or what technology was going to become. So I imagined that I would have basically this really big truck full of stuff. And I thought, well, can I delete some of that stuff out? Can I have a blueprint? And then, and in the end, I kept making this, making it smaller, got to maybe half a truck and then to a suitcase. And I went, okay, well, screw it. I want to, I want to carry my entire technology in my pocket. Hmm. How do I do it? And I'm not like going to launch into a Steve Jobian, you know, um, iPlayer. I came up with a Matchbox survival kit. In that Matchbox survival kit, I would have the minimum stuff that would allow me to interact with the environment to build my shelter, to build a fishing rod, mm -hmm. to build a water purification system. And it's kind of like, so what did I use in my box to assemble in the environment, to assemble, to mm -hmm. assemble, to assemble? Uh, and and I realized I could make a causal chain in my survival kit. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's probably why I've been obsessed with assembly theory for so long. And I was just pre-configured to find it somewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when I saw it in molecules, I, I, I realized that the causal structure that we say emerges and the physics kind of gets really stuck because they're saying that time, you can go backwards in time. I mean, how do we like, let physicists get away with the notion that we can go back in time and meet ourselves? I mean, that, that, that's clearly a very hard thing to let, our, we, physicists would not let other sciences get away with th that kind of heresy, right? So why are physicists allowed to get away with it? Let's, let's So first of all, to push back, to play devil's advocate, you are clearly married to the idea of memory. 
you see in this again Rick from Rick and Morty where you see you you have these deep dreams of the universe that is writing the story through its memories through these chemical compounds that are just building on top of each other and and then they they find useful components they can reuse and then the the reused components uh create systems that themselves are then reused mm -hmm. and all in this way construct things but when you think of that as memory it seems like quite sad that you can walk that back but at the same time it feels like that memory you can walk in both directions on that memory in in terms of time you could walk in both directions but i don't i don't think that that makes any sense because um the problem that i have with time being reversible is that um I mean, I'm I'm just a you know I'm a dumb experimental chemist, right? So I love burning stuff, yeah. you know, burning stuff and building stuff. But when I think of reversible phenomena, I imagine in my head, I have to actually manufacture some time. I have to, I have to borrow time from the universe to do that. I can't. When anyone says, "Let's imagine that we can go back in time," or reversibility, you can't do that. You can't step out of time. Time is non-negotiable. It's happening. No, but see, you're assuming that time is fundamental, which most of us do when we go day to day, but it takes well, a leap of wild imagination to think that time is emergent. Um, no, time is not emergent. Yeah, I mean, this is an argument we can have, but I believe I can come up with an experiment. An experiment that proves that time cannot possibly be emergent? An experiment that shows how assembly theory kind of is the way that the universe produces selection and that selection gives rise to life. And also to say, well, hang on, we could allow ourselves to have a theory that requires us to have these, these statements to be possible. Mm -hmm. Like we need, we need to have order in the past, or we can have use the past hypothesis, um, which is order in the past, but <laughs> as well, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, and we have to have an arrow of time. We have to require that entropy increases and we have to say and then we can say look the universe is completely closed and there's no novelty or that novelty is predetermined what i'm saying is very very important that time is fundamental which means if you think about it the universe becomes more and more novel each step it generates its more states in the next step than it was before so that means bigger search so what i'm saying is that the universe wasn't capable of consciousness at day one <laughs> actually because it didn't have enough states but but today the universe is comp so it's like how all right all right hold on a second now we've pissed off the panpsychists too okay no this is brilliant sorry i'm, I'm <laughs> a part of me is just you know joking having fun with this thing but because uh, you're saying a lot of brilliant stuff and i'm trying to slow it down before my brain explodes so because i want to break break apart some of the, the fascinating things you're saying so novelty novelty is increasing in the universe because the number of states is increasing. What do you mean by states? So I think the physicists almost got everything right. I can't, I can't fault them at all. I just think there's a little bit of dogma. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate. I'm, I'm very happy to be entirely wrong on this, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not right on many things at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but if I can make less assumptions about the universe with this, then potentially that's a more powerful way of looking at things. If you think of time as fundamental, yeah. you can make less assumptions overall. Exactly. Okay. The time is fundamental. I don't need to add on a magical second law because the second law comes out of the fact the universe is actually there's more states available. I mean, we might even be able to do weird things like dark energy in the universe might actually just be time, right? Yeah, but then you have to still have to explain why time is fundamental because I can give you one explanation that's simpler than time and say God. You know, like just because it's simple doesn't mean it's. But, it's, but, but okay, you still have to explain God, and you still have to explain time. Like, why is it fundamental? So let's just say existence is default, which means time is the default. So look, wait, wait, of, how did you go from the existence to the well, default? Well, the time is the default. Well, look, well, we exist, right? So let's just we we'll just just take we'll be very. We're yet to talk about what exist means. All right, let's let's go all the way back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think it's very poetic and beautiful what you're weaving into this. I, I don't think this conversation is even about the assembly, uh, which is fascinating, and we'll keep mentioning the assembly index and this idea that I don't think is necessarily connected to time. Oh, I think it is deeply connected. I, like, can't, wait, I can't explain it yet. So, so you don't think everything you've said about assembly theory and assembly index 
can still be correct even if time is emergent. So, yeah, right now, assembly theory appears to work. I appear to be able to measure objects of high assembly in a mass spectrometer and look at their abundance and, you know, all that's fine, right? It's a, it's a nice, if nothing else, it's a nice way of looking at how molecules can compress things. Mm -hmm. um, now, am I saying that a time has to be fundamental, not emergent for assembly theory to work? No. I'm, I think I'm saying that the universe... Um, it appears that the universe has many different ways of using time. You could have three different types of time. You could just have time that's the way I would think of it. If you want, if you want to hold on to emergent time, I think that's fine. Let's do that for a second. Hold on to emergent time, and the universe is just doing its thing. Then assembly time only exists when the universe starts to write memories through bonds. So let's just say there's rocks running around. You know, there's there's when when the bond happens and selection starts suddenly. There are there, the universe is remembering cause in, in the past, and those structures will have effects in the future. Mm -hmm. So suddenly, a new type of time emerges at that point, which has a, a direction. And I think Sean Carroll at that, this point might even turn the podcast back on and go, "Okay, I can yeah. deal with that. That's yeah. fine." Yeah. But I'm just basically trying to condense the conversation and say, hey, let's just have time fundamental and see how that screws with people's minds. Why yeah, you're triggering people by saying fundamental? Why not? Well, you just well, say, like, I, let's say. Why am I? Look, I'm walking through the wall. Why, why, why should I grow up in a world where time, time I don't go back in time. I don't, meet, I don't meet myself in the past. There are no one, there are no aliens coming from the future, right? Yeah, but, you know, it's but, just but like. Here, well, no, no, but that's not. No, 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 hold on a second. That's like saying we're talking about biology or, or like uh, evolutionary psychology and you saying, okay, let's just assume that that clothing is fundamental. People wearing clothes is fundamental. It's like, no, 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 no. wait a minute. <laughs> okay. You can't, like, I think you're getting in a lot of trouble if you assume time is fundamental. Why? Give me one reason why I'm getting into trouble with time being fundamental. Because you might not understand the origins of this memory that might be deeper okay. like that this memory that could be a thing that's explaining the construction of these uh higher complexities better than just saying it's uh it's a search it's it's chemicals doing a search for uh reusable uh reusable structures that they can like then uh, use as bricks to build a house okay so I accept that. So let's, let's let's go back a second because it's a kind of it, it is. I wanted to drop the time bomb at this part mm -hmm. because I think we can carry on discussing it for many, 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 many days, many Excellent. months. Uh -huh. um, but I'm happy to accept that it might be wrong. But what I would like to do is imagine a universe where time is fundamental and time is emergent, and ask. Let's just then talk about causation, because physicists require that causation. So this is where I'm going to go. Causation emerges, and it doesn't exist at the micro scale. Well, that clearly is wrong, because if causation has to emerge at the macro scale, life cannot emerge. So how does life emerge? Life requires molecules to bump into each other, produce replicators. Those replicators need to produce polymers. There needs to be cause and effect at the molecular level. There needs to be an agurdic, non agurdic to an agurdic transition, right? At some point, and and. Those replicators have consequence, material consequence in the universe. Physicists just say, oh, you know what? I'm going to have a bunch of particles in a box. I'm going to, I'm going to think about it in a, in a Newtonian way, in a quantum way, and I'll add on an arrow of time so I can label things, and causation will happen magically later. Well, how? Explain causation. And they can't. The only way I can reconcile causation is having a fundamental time because this allows me to have a deterministic universe that is creates novelty, and we and there's so many there's so many things to unpack here. But let's go back to the point you said: Does can assembly theory work with emergent time? Sure, it can, but it doesn't give me a deep satisfaction about how causation an assembly gives rise to these objects that go, that move through time and space. And again, what am I saying to bring it back? I can say, without fear you know, take this water bottle and look at this water bottle and look at the features on it. There's writing. You've got a load of them. Um, I know that causal structures gave rise to this. In fact, I'm not looking at just one water bottle here. I'm looking at every water bottle that's ever been conceived of by humanity. Mm -hmm. This here is a special object. In fact, Leibniz knew this. You know, Leibniz um, it was at the same time of Newton. He kind of got stuck. I think Leibniz actually invented assembly theory 
You gave soul. The soul that you see in objects wasn't the so mystical soul. It is assembly. It is a fact there's been a history of objects related. And without, without the object in the past, this object wouldn't exist. There is a lineage and there is conserved structures, causal structures that have given rise to those. Fair enough. And uh, you're saying it's just a simpler view if time is fundamental. And it and it shakes the physicist cage a bit, right? Mm -hmm. I'm say, but I think that <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I just enjoy the fact that physicists are in cages. This is I good. think that this I mean I, I would say that you know Lee Smolin. I don't want to speak for Lee. I'm I'm talking to Lee about this. I think Lee also is in agreement that time is, has to be fundamental. But I think he goes further. You know, even in space, I don't think you can go back to the same place in space. I've been to Austin a few times now. This is my I think third time I've been to Austin. Mm -hmm. Is Austin in the same place? No. The solar system is moving through space. I'm not back in the same space. Locally, I am. Every yeah. event in the universe is unique. In space. And time.